Hello to, to everybody. I'm Cristiano, the lead AI scientist here at Pi School. And uh, this, uh, I think it's our third uh, tech talk of session 13. And uh, today it's a pleasure to host uh, Francesco, uh, Francesco Patanet. Francesco is a passionate uh, biotechnology researcher. He holds a bachelor degree in biotechnology from uh, the University of Padova where basically explore the metabolic engineering in cannabis to optimize uh, cannabinoid production. I hope to, 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 to be precise <laughs> in case you will correct me, uh, Francesco. And uh, in the last uh, 10 months, um, he mainly researched uh, reverse vaccinology utilizing machine learning, using machine learning and deep learning. And that's the topic of uh, today's uh, talk. I don't want to spoil her too much, uh, and so I, I will leave uh, the floor to you, Francesco, and please, uh, Francesco, welcome again, and uh, you can go ahead. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Cristiano. <laughs> so, uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Francesco, and uh, uh, during the last year, I worked uh, as a research intern uh, in uh, the Filippinis lab uh, at the University of Padova. Uh, in order to develop and study new uh, computational vaccinology methods to discover uh, new vaccines and new antigens uh, starting from uh, uh, nucleotide sequence and uh, uh, genomic sequence and uh, um, protein uh, of uh, pathogenic organism like uh, bacteria and uh, eukaryotic ones. And uh, as uh, Cristiano said, uh, today I will uh, introduce to you uh, some concepts about uh, uh, vaccinology, uh, in particular um, about uh, uh, computational vaccinology methods like uh, traditional uh, machine learning models and uh, deep learning ones. Uh, in the first part of the talk, I will uh, discuss uh, with you about uh, what a vaccine is and uh, what uh, an antigen is. Then uh, I uh, will uh, discuss about uh, how we can take uh, a protein sequence and uh, how we can encode it in a mathematical manner to extract uh, uh, numeric features in order to create uh, a data matrix uh, that we can fed to the to the model in order to train it and uh, finally we we will see how uh, a protein language model is and uh, how uh, we can use it uh, to uh, infer about uh, protein properties and uh, to uh, give uh, a kind of uh, explanation about uh, uh, between uh, input uh, and uh, output uh, predicted by the by models <clears throat> so as you probably uh, just know uh, vaccines are the most powerful and fact effective and uh, safe medical tools that we have to fight uh, infectious diseases. In fact, uh, as you can uh, see uh, by from the second image, uh, throughout the history, vaccines helped uh, in eradicating terrible uh, illnesses like rubella, smallpox, uh, polio, and diphtheria, and so on. Uh, a great advantage uh, that uh, uh, we can add from uh, uh, vaccines uh, is that uh, they are very useful also in contrasting pharmacoresistance uh, phenomena and uh, the emergence of uh, new variants of pathogens uh, through mutations and uh, natural selection. But uh, what is a vaccine? A vaccine, generally speaking, is a pharmaceutical formulation that uh, when administered uh, to animals or to humans, uh, can trigger an immunization process, uh, activating the uh, adaptive immun immun immune system. And uh, a vaccine generally is composed 
of uh, multiple components like uh, adjuvants, preservatives, uh, stabilizers, uh, and antibiotics. But uh, the main uh, protagonist of a vaccine is represented by uh, the antigen or uh, uh, the so-called immunogen. That is uh, any component uh, derived uh, from the pathogen uh, that is capable of uh, triggering uh, an immune response. Uh, during this talk, uh, we will discuss only about uh, proteins because the majority of vaccines uh, are, um, um, are developed using uh, proteins. And uh, um, what is more, uh, proteins are very important because they are well studied and uh, they are uh, uh, well, uh, good antigens and good uh, immunogens. But uh, what is a protein? A protein is uh, a linear uh, amino acid sequence that uh, folds in a particular three-dimensional way. Uh, conformation that is uh, essential for the correct uh, function of the protein. Uh, as you can see from the second image, uh, every protein is uh, composed of only uh, 20 unique amino acids that uh, can uh, um, combine uh, together uh, amino acid after amino acid in uh, uh, a big combination of, uh, of modes. Um, protein are very important in the vaccinology field because they are the main protagonist of every phenomena that occur into the cell. They are widely used by pathogens to interact and invade uh, the cell host and uh, the, the host cell and the host tissues. Uh, they are capable of triggering uh, the production of antibodies that are uh, uh, proteins that uh, target uh, pathogens and uh, neutralize them. And uh, also uh, proteins contain active sites called uh, pockets that uh, we can target with uh, drugs uh, and uh, ligands. The identification of uh, vaccine through traditional vaccinology methods has many challenges and problems. Uh, for example, uh, these methods are uh, uh, time consuming, are very costly, and uh, they require a lot of uh, in vitro and in vivo tests, uh, and so they require a lot of animals uh, for the experimentation. Uh, another big problem of uh, nowadays is the is that uh, climate change is uh, uh, cause the rapidly spreading of uh, pathogenic alien species from uh, uh, tropical and subtropical regions to uh, temperate regions. So we need the innovative, uh, costless, and uh, rapid methods to uh, discover new vaccines. A solution uh, can be represent by can be represented by computational methods in order to identify protein vaccine candidates, uh, starting from uh, uh, genomic sequence and uh, proteome of uh, of an organism, uh, where the proteome is uh, the full set of proteins uh, uh, produced by uh, the organism. Uh, we have mainly two approaches. Uh, nowadays, uh, that are uh, alignment-based methods and uh, machine learning and deep learning-based methods. Um, the principle beyond the, the first method is that uh, if we have uh, a protein that we call B, A, that is very similar uh, by a sequence perspective with uh, a a well-characterized protein that uh, we call B, we can say with high probability that uh, our protein A has the same function and properties of the protein B. But uh, um, this method has uh, many problems. And the first is that uh, it's very difficult uh, to set uh, a 
similarity threshold decision, uh, similarity decision threshold to say if uh, how our protein B is uh, similar to uh, the protein A. Uh, so uh, in general with uh, mm, similarity uh, alignment based methods and machine learning methods, we can uh, uh, develop uh, uh, a big plethora of uh, predictors. For example, we can predict uh, the subcellular localization of uh, the protein. Uh, we can predict uh, the toxicity level, the, the antigenicity level. Uh, we can predict uh, if, a, if a protein uh, will, be, uh, will have uh, adhesin properties. Uh, also, we can predict uh, epitopes that are little fragment, little protein fragments, and we can also create uh, pipelines that can incorporate uh, all these predictors in order to aggregate uh, all the results into a one uh, and new uh, metric score. So if we want to train uh, uh, predictors with uh, uh, noun proteins, we, we must use uh, supervised machine learning methods. And so we need uh, uh, databases, uh, we need uh, data sets containing labeled proteins and we can catch them uh, using uh, uh, important databases like as Uniprot and Protein Data Bank. Uh, but there is a big problem. So how can we represent proteins in a mathematically manner uh, in order to obtain a data, a data matrix? So we can uh, do this task uh, using uh, protein descriptors that are uh, mathematical functions that we can use to uh, mine numerical features from uh, protein sequences. Uh, there are uh, a vast plethora of, uh, uh, um, of uh, uh, protein descriptors, like as mathematical ones, uh, physical chemical descriptors, and also three dimensional descriptors. Um, as you can see from the uh, from the image, uh, many of these descriptors uh, has uh, a high dimensionality. Uh, so uh, the, the first problem when using protein descriptors is uh, the high level of overfitting. Uh, the second problem of using uh, this type of descriptors is represented by the poor explainability of the model. So we are not able to uh, correlate the input uh, with the output. And uh, uh, we are not able to correlate in particular every single amino acidic substitution into the sequence with the predicted value uh, of the model. So a possible solution can be represented by the use of uh, uh, protein language models. Protein language models are deep learning models that are trained on a large corpora of uh, uh, protein sequences uh, using multiple sequence alignments. Um, protein language models are based on natural language processing methods. In fact, uh, they use uh, attention-based mechanism and uh, trans the transformer technology and they can learn and encode detailed phylogenetic relationship between uh, protein sequences. And this can help to uh, better understand the underlying biology uh, of proteins. Uh, a great advantage uh, of these types of models is uh, uh, the fact that uh, we don't have to use handcrafted uh, uh, molecular descriptors like uh, we we seen before, but uh, uh, we can uh, use the model to automatic extract uh, uh, features from uh, protein sequences. Uh, for this reason, protein language models have shown great results in predicting about uh, the structure, uh, function, properties, and uh, also to generate new sequences with uh, uh, desired properties. 
If we imagine our protein uh, sequence as a phrase, we can uh, say that uh, every, amino, every single amino acid into the sequence uh, could be represented uh, as a word. So, uh, like uh, uh, in, in um, models like G GPT and BARD, we can uh, take these words and uh, tokenize them, and then we can put uh, these words in a multidimensional embedding space. Uh, in order, and in this mode, uh, every uh, similar amino acids will be close together in this embedding space. Finally, so we can pre we can take uh, every protein sequence and uh, we can predict uh, its function or uh, its uh, properties. A great advantage of uh, uh, protein language models is uh, uh, that uh, uh, they allow us to derive a kind of explainability a kind of explanation between the input sequence and the output. Uh, so we can use uh, methods like as integrated gradients and in silico mutagenesis experiment, where uh, we take uh, uh, every single protein and we mutate them in every location, in every amino acidic location uh, in a randomly way um and uh, uh, doing this we can identify the contribution of each amino acid for the prediction uh, in this case as you can see the the blue color represent a negative output while the orange color represent a, a positive output and uh, in this case the the heat region of the protein and uh, specific uh, sequential patterns are strongly associated with the function or the protein property but uh, in, in this case we we are considering only a single sequence if we want to better understand the the connection uh, between the functional impact uh, of the sequence region and uh, and uh, the um, the function, we can uh, use the absolute value subtracted from the in silico mutagenesis experiment. Uh, we can use uh, uh, this as a saliency score or an importance score uh, to evaluate how the contextual um, region affect the protein function or property. Uh, in order to unify all the sequences into a fixed length, uh, we can split uh, every sequence into a fixed number of parts. So we can uh, um, make the sum of uh, every single contribute. And uh, finally, we can uh, plot a complete correlation map between amino acid position ratio in the whole dataset. As you can see from the first image, uh, the amino acid M has a more functional impact uh, uh, on the central region, while, uh, while, for example, the amino acid C has a more functional impact on the tail region. Another great opportunity that uh, protein language models uh, gives to us is the possibility to explore and discover uh, particular patterns or motifs uh, from an uh, unidentified uh, important region. So uh, we can uh, use the importance scores to, to find the most important regions and uh, to mine uh, patterns that uh, uh, can determine the function or a specific property of uh, our protein. In this case, uh, um, it was identified, uh, a motif it was identified from a particular region of the protein, um, that is uh, the, the motif on the left, and uh, using uh, uh, traditional bioinformatic uh, tools, uh, uh, we uh, was able uh, we were able to identify the 
a, a very similar uh, pattern uh, uh, with classical methods. Uh, so uh, these type of methods are a very valuable tool for sequential pattern discovery. So in conclusion, deep learning models uh, enable us to uh, develop uh, complex uh, models uh, capable of uh, understanding uh, intricate uh, and uh, long-term uh, and mid-term patterns in the sequence. Uh, um, this type of models can lower the overfitting level and produce better prediction metrics. Um, we can uh, uh, mine uh, useful insights into the reasoning behind the prediction and we can identify uh, important or essential regions and patterns associated with a specific function or property. Uh, so with this type uh, of uh, uh, models, uh, we can uh, make the cost, uh, um, we can lower cost associated with development and uh, research uh, uh, process. We can use uh, fewer animal animals during the experimentations and we can uh, make the, the research and development process uh, faster. Thank you. If you have uh, any question, I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Francesco. And uh, super interesting. Uh, I have a question, but if there are uh, some questions from the audience, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand. Uh, I will give you the, uh, the floor. Hello, good afternoon, Francesco. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for this interesting talk. I'd like to know uh, in this kind of bioinformatics study, how to evaluate uh, the findings of the system? Is there a uh, relatively easier way to validate results? Uh, can, can you repeat, please? I, I don't know. I mean I just want to know that uh, how to validate uh, the, the the findings from those algorithms. Okay, uh, in this case, uh, we validate the, the findings uh, uh, using traditional bioinformatics methods. And uh, so we, we were able to compare uh, these methods and to uh, evaluate the final results. Okay. So, like uh, in the in the example of the pattern discovery case, uh, we we validate the the uh, the pattern uh, using traditional methods. Okay, for for the for the application like uh, alpha fold, how do they valid, validate uh, their result? Um, well, what? Uh, alpha fold. I mean, DeepMind has something like alpha fold, right? Ah, For okay. The protein. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you you are asking how how to validate uh, alpha fold results? I'm uh, I'm right. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Those, let me maybe predict some new some some new some new uh protein protein of structure. So for those things uh, can, can that also be validated by the traditional bioinformatics uh, tools uh, it's a, a good question uh, at the moment I I, I I'm don't able to to uh, answer to that okay yeah i just think that uh, the application is quite uh, interesting but uh, the experiment uh, of biomathematics i mean the, the laboratory experiment is quite time consuming so mm. if there is some good way to 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 validate all the findings here to make it not just in paper also in practice yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's a recent field and uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, we we uh, 
we must validate these results uh, uh, with uh, laboratory approaches and uh, yeah, I yeah. will be done. <laughs> okay, thank you, Francesco. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Rui, for the question. Thank you, Francesco. If there are other questions, feel free to unmute yourself, or also, if you want, you can write them in the, in the chat. Uh, hi, Francesco. Uh, thank you so much for the talk. It's uh, really interesting. I have one question about uh, using AI in this particular, in, in the drug discovery space uh, in general. Um, what is the what is the estimated cost reduction or the gain of uh, using AI? Is it is it proven? Because protein discovery, especially, is something um, time consuming. Even if you are, even if you are able to predict a molecule. So I just wanted to understand that. I uh, I have a bad connection. If you can repeat, please. Uh... Okay, sure. Um, I just I wanted to know what is the impact of uh, these, uh, say these AI algorithms as far as uh, cost efficiency is concerned. Ah, okay. Um, so uh, for. Uh, uh, for the, the developing of uh, a drug or in general for a vaccine, uh, pharmaceutical industries can, uh, uh, the, the entire process can require also one or two billion dollars. Uh, from the, the, uh, the drug discovery process to the, the introduction to the market. Uh, so as uh, we, we seen uh, with, uh, for example, COVID case, uh, we, we can uh, uh, reduce uh, a lot this uh, associated cost and uh, we can develop vaccine uh, also in a uh, few months. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a question, but before, uh, if uh, anybody else uh, wants to to ask uh, something to Francesco, feel free. Okay, so maybe I can I can uh, ask you my question. It's uh, let's say a long term vision question or a startup idea. Let's say. Uh, so my question is, uh, today uh, we see many large language models uh, that basically uh, given a prompt, given the proper prompt, uh, they can generate a specific text uh, that is close to what the prompt engineering was thinking. Think about uh, you want to, I don't know, uh, generate a text uh, talking about deep learning we can prompt to the large language model chat gpt gpt4 we can prompt something like write me a text about deep learning uh, my question is do you think that in the future will be possible to prompt some instruction uh, maybe about some given uh, organism you have in mind some back bacteria or uh, an organism you have in mind you describe it and there is a, a protein uh, large language model that uh, will output uh, will generate uh, the dna sequence uh, of that organism so something like uh, uh, text to dna do you think it's feasible in the next uh, 20 years or something like that uh, or it's uh, very impossible so uh, it is a, a good question i think uh, that uh, in the near future uh, models like uh, this can uh, we uh, will exist but uh, um, i think it is uh, it is a very difficult task because we have to 
we have to unify the the input uh, prompt with uh, the, the generation of a particular sequence and uh, uh, long term and mid term uh, connections uh, into the proteins uh, and the uh, relate properties and functions are very complex but uh, uh, it is uh, an exciting uh, question an exciting field for me yes i think so will be very difficult maybe as an intermediate step could be that you can give to this uh, protein language model a dna sequence with some maybe genetic genetic defects mm -hmm. and uh, you can ask the language mod the protein language model to uh, i don't know create a new one but without uh, uh, or changing some aspect uh, and maybe this could be done in the next 10 years so i'm not an expert into protein la language model but uh, given that the, the field of ai is really speeding up uh, uh, maybe could be could be uh, uh could be possible i don't know <laughs> okay so uh, if there are no other questions or uh, consideration, maybe you want to say something, uh, feel free. Otherwise, uh, we can thank again uh, Francesco. And if you want to uh, to reach him, uh, I think on the on the talk uh, uh, blog post on Pi School, there are uh, his contacts and uh, feel free to contact him and ask uh, whatever you like about uh, machine learning and uh, busing uh, so on and so forth okay perfect so francesco thank you again i think thank you. your your video will be posted in one month by lucia on uh, on youtube she will contact you maybe and uh hope to see you to see you soon and uh, good luck for for your research okay thank you cristiano it was a pleasure <laughs> thank you <laughs>